<laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the great Ty Law. Woo! Hey, everybody, everybody. Morning, Ty. Thank you. I can't believe you're still alive. How many shots of Corvus last night would you guess? If I had to guess off the top of my head, we had to take about... Thank, I was about to say the same thing. Yeah, 24? Like 20, no, something like that. Probably about 15 to yeah. 20, you know what I mean? Something did like you, that. Did you try the Corvus Mind Eraser? Uh, that, that was amazing. I had to have him show me how to do that one, but I definitely uh, that's definitely going to be a part of my drink now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I like that. Was, that was great. How you did a great job uh, at Tom Brady night, Wednesday night. Uh, I don't understand why Mike Tirico is able to keep you from swearing, but I am not on this show. Uh, <laughs> so, I, I spelled it out. Yeah, you spelled it I out. I spelled it out. You but, know what I mean? Um, how great. Wiggy talked a lot yesterday about not only, obviously, honoring Tom, but being able to see all the guys that you played with. And what a great what a great experience. Man, that, 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 that was the best because we all have our lives professionally and, you know, you got your kids to see everybody come back. And only Tom Brady can do that is bring everybody back like that. I mean, we had over 100 guys right. that played, you know, uh, you know, past, present. Man, it felt like we never left. It was like we was in the – it was really like we was in the locker room, bro. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we – like yesterday. You know that, what I mean? That standing ovation that Bill got oh. shows you how loved yeah. Bill Belichick is. No, Bill Belichick is still uh, beloved. You know, I, I didn't like the whole rhetoric – as far as um, his, it was like his championships didn't count, but all Tom's did. All seven of his count, but not not Bills. But yeah, that, but that's, right? that's yes. straight up. That's yes. straight up bullshit. You know what I mean? <laughs> there we go. Okay. okay. Nailed oh. it. I, yeah. I'm so, I, I, hey, I'm sorry, Leo. I, I, we got a little one in here. I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> Start him young, man. Start him young. Uh. Uh, Were, you, what, was it backstage interesting, like after the fact? Was Kraft and Bill ever in the same room backstage? No. You know what? I, I don't know. I didn't see him. Did you? I, I, no, I, no, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't see him. So we were so busy back there drinking shots of Corvus. You know, I had everybody back there drinking. So yeah. we, we, everybody, when we talked, we was probably out there tipsy, y'all. We was drinking the Corvus. Cause you we, should we, get some Corvus logoed uh, clothing that you could wear at events like that. Good call. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did y'all taste the Screaming Goat when you was there? So the Screaming Goat is made with Corvus because I called Tom uh, prior to. And I was like, I know what they was going to do. I said, Tom. We ain't about to drink all this Texas shit <laughs> at your thing, man. Okay. Yeah. We, hey, we are in New England. Yes. So Corvus needs to be there. So he was like, you know what, Ty, I got you. I just wanted to make sure I had to call the man himself because if I came in there and seen a bunch of vodka outside of Corvus. Yeah. Screaming I'm, Goat. I'm mess it up. Screaming Goat also <laughs> what used to happen when Jackson worked on a farm. Oh. Uh, early. <laughs> early. Early in, his, early in his life. It's not nice. <laughs> That's not nice. It's not nice. It's not nice. <laughs> but it's not nice. I didn't well, know where you were going with that. You never know where Greg's going. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I we, we were talking about this the other day. and uh, I mean, there, there, there's always somebody better, I guess. But yeah. will in your mind, will there ever be a quarterback better than Tom Brady? Absolutely not. And I, and I, I understand the whole talk with – Patrick Mahomes because he's doing things right now in his career that's so early, but I still think the only that's the only one that you can say he might be able to do it if he plays long enough. But Tom Brady is in a conversation all by himself. It's not even it's not even close right now as far as I'm concerned. So you know he has to he has to catch up right now. He no Patrick Mahomes has to catch up with uh, Joe Montana first before you even think about talking about Tom Brady. But he's done separated himself so far. You know, beyond what anybody can uh, can can do right now, but the only one that can possibly have numbers close to him is Patrick Mahomes. That's real, but I think it's just still too soon to say he's on that level. And Ty, we talked about it after on Thursday. The thing that stood out for me was how consistent the messaging was, regardless of when the players played right. with you guys, whether it was you and Willie and Vince and Wiggy and Brewski versus. Devin and Welker, I mean, uh, Devin and Edelman and, and those guys. What was it about what you guys did? Is it just the, the edge that Willie talked about yeah. that you guys started that Tom took to the next guys? Because it was amazing to me that for 20 years, with many different rosters, all the things you guys said were the same. Well, you, well, you got to think about it. It started in the locker room with us. So right. we had this thing called the edge. I mean, and we competed 
everything. I'm talking about from, from the time you pick up your water. If I pick up my water and I look at Wiggy, you know he got to take a sip because you got to stay hydrated. Man, we, we played the stupidest games, but it brought us together, you know, as a team. And then I think when Tom came in and learned, he was somebody always there to, to pass on that knowledge. And then when he left, you can see the difference. Right. They just, it's, you can not just, you know, in the locker room, but you can see the differences on the field. So when guys, you know, the the regime didn't carry on for whatever reason, yeah. but it was but, there for but a long is, time. Is, is Gerard Mayo then the – can you back it up? Can you be that way with the the players of today? And it's a general issue, generational with some of them. Mm-hmm. And is Gerard Mayo the right coach then for these guys who don't want to be, who can't be held accountable? Who I mean, they're doing. I don't know if you've heard this. They're doing virtual like mind sprints down there. That's what they do. What? <laughs> huh? Yeah. They take a break and they do <laughs> they do mind sprints. Yeah. yeah. You gonna do Come a on, man. You gonna, I know you, Mayo ain't that. You that gonna, ain't you gonna do a mind conditioning test. Well, I, I am love, gonna hey, I would love to get a mind interception to get paid for it. <laughs> later I later all about, I can I do is think about, about it and say I won't do it. Later today I'm gonna do a mind marathon. Yeah. And then I I won't be <laughs> yeah, tired yeah. at the end of the Yeah, mind workout. Get up yeah. in the morning, do a mind workout. Ooh. Yeah. But is Gerard, is Gerard Mayo the right coach when I, I think for these is, kind of guys? I think he is, which is because sad. he's still, you know, young enough to relate to him, but old enough to understand what it took to win a championship and and be around a culture. So I think he is a great bridge. So if you come in with somebody else that's a lot older that don't that, that really can't relate to him, and I think that might have been one of the things with uh you know Bill is different. You know that's why Nick Saban left. It's like man, they're getting paid more than me now. Well, you know I, what I, I mean? So it's just a different ballgame. I think the biggest thing and one of the things that made the the run that the Patriots and we had special is even when Randy talked about it and Rodney, it's like the players in the locker room Buying in to what the veterans that are there that laid the foundation right. are selling, right? So if Willie and Ty and Lawyer are telling us we need to do this, we need to do X, Y, and Z, yes, the the rookies, I get that, but then it's those guys that have been in the league three, four, five years who are going, okay, we buying into what so they're saying. On that on that team now, that is left to David Andrews. Yeah, but I don't know if those guys uh, – Right, right. Yeah, and I don't know if those guys are buying in like we right. used to buy in. But I think it all makes sense now. I think I fully understand the Brady-Bill dynamic. It was Bill's coaching that laid the foundation with you guys setting the standard. It was Tom the Prophet who took those messages and sold them to the masses of the team. When you remove Tom – It's not that you just removed the greatest quarterback of all time. You removed the person who is the biggest pontificator and spreader of the gospel of Bill. Yeah. And people they have to listen to. You can't ignore Tom Brady. And then you bring in Mac Jones and Bill Belichick was done with Mac Jones. Because Mac was bitching. You you got a point, Curtis. But, I mean, and I say this with with all due respect. It wasn't the gospel of Bill. Right. It was the gospel of the guys in the locker room. Building, building, we, we created the culture which you see the Patriot way. You guys coined it the Patriot way, but that was a locker room thing. That's right. right. I mean, and, and Bill, he came in there as like, whatever. Whatever we created, that's what Bill was going to rule. He was going to coach. But I, it's when people say Bill is, he ruled with the iron hand. No, the iron hand was in the locker room. Right. I mean, you walk past that damn locker room, you know, Willie McGinnis sitting right there. But some you know of that I mean? came from Bill, from the way Bill would coach. Or no, it was you guys, Bill, Bill lucked out. Yeah, and got a group of guys that bought we remember, in. way back. We, we remember, who, we, who, a lot of us was Parcells guys. Right, you know, we was already here, so the the culture was already being established. So yes, Bill was there in '96, mm-hmm. but he left. But this core group of guys, we were already there, and Bill came back. Right, so he knew who we were, but we had already right. established a certain type of and, identity. And, and Bill brought like guys like myself or Bobby Hamilton from New York that with the Jets where Parcells was, but you know. After he went from New England to New York, that's where some of us other guys came from. Anthony Pleasant. It, it, it's really about. It was about those guys in the lock. So you got to understand, right? If you got a guy like Ty, or you got a guy like um, Lawyer, or you got a guy like Antoine Smith or Troy Brown, if you got these guys pushing a message, and then guys like 
Mike Compton, um, Bobby Hamilton, they're all buying into the message that's being point, uh, put out by the leadership guys. And you start to see how everybody's pushing each other and everybody's like holding each other accountable. It's about the players buying in where I think nowadays some of those guys, like if Ty said something to, hey, you need to do this, this, and this, and the guy's been in the league three or four years, they might look at Ty nowadays and go, man, whatever, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm doing it virtually. Yeah, well, no, yeah. it's like whatever. Where, <laughs> right. where if it was like if it was with Antoine Harris, he'd be like, I got it. All right. now, and I think that's the different yeah. element. Well, that then we had. What's the have... secret sauce? What was Bill's secret sauce that he brought to it? Because if, if I'm just hearing this, then in my mind, Bill lucked out. No, I mean, he was fortunate to have players that cared. You know, right. we cared about the game. We was holding each other accountable. So, of course, Bill was going to hold us accountable to do our job. Right. And because guess what? He will fire you now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he will take you off the field. So you have to do your job. And. I think it was a it was a great mix of that type of old school mentality right. that we had as players. He was an old school type of coach, but all and Bill Tom wanted Brady. to do, he don't, and it was like a perfect storm. Exactly, yeah. it, Brady exactly. was a member. Brady was a young, and he was. And, he was and young. the other thing is too, like, hey, if you don't do it, there's a chance you might get chin checked. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so if you know you might get chin checked, you gotta be like, oh, okay, let me um, let me do what I need to do. But Bill picked the players, so the players that were there, by and large. Were there obviously there were several that were holdovers from Marcel. Mm -hmm. Oh, but, but see the, the, the holdover that's what that's when the whole he, who picked the groceries, the holdover from the par sales when you even talking about Drew Bled, so right. We controlled the locker room. Right. You know what I mean? So you can say Bill picked the player, he picked this, picked that, but the guys that ran the locker room, it's like if you was in a prison, right? If somebody, somebody's in there that's got control. It was, it was, it, 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 it ain't was the us. warden. <laughs> we, hey, well, it, Bill might have been the warden, but we control what went on, you know, in the cell. <laughs> it sounds like we're at we're at the Beachcomber in Wellfleet with the great Ty Law this morning. Um, it sounds sounds like Trevor Lawrence will be able to afford his groceries. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh yeah. So ooh. that it looks like it's five years, two hundred and seventy-five million dollars. Unbelievable. For, for, and that kind of, I, I look, I get a little upset. Like I, I gotta uh, be honest, guys. I'm a little upset with my mom and my dad. <laughs> they hooked up way too damn early. <laughs> I feel the same way about my mama. I'm you like, I'm like, like y'all little, y'all little freaking sons. Y'all could have waited about 10, 15 years. <laughs> right. Just, just nasty. Yeah. yeah. God damn. Couldn't have waited some time. That yeah. Long. But, but Curtis was saying this morning. <laughs> what wealthy person? Was that you who said? I mean. That's a lot of money. For it's a lot of money for Trevor Lawrence, who That's obviously is. Oh no, was, that was Shime's lead. Yeah, yeah. yeah Shime, sorry. No, yeah, Curtis. Curtis taking the credit. Your lead, lead essentially, Shime. It's not every was, day I get tell Ty what you said this morning. Yeah, basically, my my lead was is that's a ton of money to commit to a guy who hasn't necessarily excelled. He's been good, and I like Trevor Lawrence, but he hasn't been as good as a guy like Joe Burrow, and they're making basically the same amount of money. Well, that's just the market. You know, yeah. the market dictates what somebody's going to get paid, just like uh, the whole thing with Dak Prescott. More than likely, Dak Prescott is going to pass both of them because it's always the next man up. And when you're talking about a contract, and I never claimed to be Deion Sanders. Like, when I came out, Deion Sanders was the GOAT. He is the GOAT. But when my contract was up, I ain't saying I'm Deion Sanders, but I'm prime time around here. Yeah. That was my <laughs> negotiation part of it. You right. know what I mean? So that's how I looked at it. So you always want to – be the next one to top it because you're not only representing yourself, you're representing right. the guys that's behind you. So the next tight end up, right? Hey, I, the money I need to keeps be going this. up. The money keeps going up, but the quarterback is one of those positions where the market, whatever the market bears, and it's and it's right now as a starter, it's going to be fifty plus million dollars a year. That's the going rate. The bottom of the barrel, the thirty second best quarterback is still going to make fifty million dollars a year. The top tier guys are going to make so much the nickelbacks the guys only play 10 15 plays a game in my position they're making what i made as a top as a top corner you know what i mean they're making seven eight nine million dollars right. but the top guys they're making 100 million guaranteed yeah yeah 30 million dollars a year yeah and, and that and that's just the going rate of the league right. and i and, and and that and that's the thing as players we we as former players you know, we're, we're, we get a little envious and jealous, but we don't get upset because when we played, right. there was the older guys yep. that looked at what we were making and going, 
damn, you know what I mean? But you always got to lay down the found the foundation, and you get a little jealous and envious. But like you yeah. said, it's like unfortunately I, we were born in the wrong era, you know. Right. I get my uncles tell me all the time. He's like, God damn, boy, you you making all that? Tony, right. this is the great Tony Dorsett because they never made that uh, type of money, and that's why. What did you? What, what was the most your uncle Tony Dorsett made? A million. That was, wow. That was wow. About dollars. that. Yeah, a yeah, million bucks. And, but that's one of the reasons that I give back. So er, so I got to say, every dollar of every bottle of Corvus <laughs> goes back to the old school guys that inspired me that didn't make a lot of money. Uh, and we've already, uh, cool. and if they passed on, we helped their widows and stuff too. So it's been very, very important because those guys didn't make money. Just because you play professional football and you got a gold jacket, that does not mean you made millions of dollars. That's I awesome. think the signature drink here this morning is the Corvus Bloody Manning. Uh, instead of the, I don't know if you know that or not. I didn't know that. I like it. I like yeah, it. I so like it. Dan, Dan and his crew here are serving those up all morning. Okay, long. okay. I'm going to tell you You talk to Robert Kraft more than we do. Yeah. Um, could you tell him that the times have changed and you have to actually spend now? Because <laughs> I feel like he still thinks it's Tony Dorsett's era. Yeah, you know what? I think Mr. Kraft. He's going to, you know, open up okay. more and more, at least. And, that, and I got that, you know, I get that sense for him. And then talking to Mayo, he's going to have some ability to go out there and pick some players. You have to open up the checkbook because no one is going to want to come. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's a short-lived career, you know, more than likely. What is the right. average, Wiggy? What, three, three, I think three, three, years. three and a half years, yeah. you know? Well, you talk about setting the standard, though, and I'm already seeing people saying, okay, so what happens with Brock Purdy next? If, if Trevor Lawrence is getting that that deal exactly now Brock Purdy and to Shime's credit you know Brock Purdy you're gonna pay him over 200 million dollars no way but th yes because that's you have the to market. you have to yes. you you have to and you he, either pay him or you trying to find somebody you else pay Brock Purdy 200 million dollars you're gonna be out of a job in three years <laughs> okay I, but but somebody is, but if get, you don't but if you don't pay him and somebody, somebody else come right. in and I'm not saying that but they have somebody that they like in the system He's already proven to win more than a lot of other quarterbacks that's getting a lot more money. So that's just the name of the game, the way it is. Uh, the reason was it the receiver for uh, Cowboys. Oh, C.D. Lamb. Right. He didn't want to sign because he knew what Justin Jefferson was going right. to get. So now Justin Jefferson, he just reset the whole market. Right. So guess what? Now C.D. Lamb waiting. Right. He's sitting there waiting. It's like, look, I, I want some of that too. Right. Mm -hmm. If you had to name one guy, and it can't be Wiggy, who are you most excited about seeing Wednesday night at Gillette? And it can't be Tom Brady. Either. You know what? Most excited about seeing? I got to say Roman Pfeiffer, man. Fife, because dog. Fife, Fife, man, that was my guy. And it's like I, like we, we like, like lost contact and touch. And yeah. then we come to find out that, you know, exchanging numbers again. We both had each other's number, you know. But, <laughs> but we just move on in, in life, man. So it was good to see Fife, man, because he was one of those great uh, underrated players. Yeah. He was great on our team, man. He was a great leader, and uh, I don't think he gets the credit that he deserves as being a great Patriot. How many wins do you have this team getting this season? <laughs> At least eight. I, I hope. Oh, yeah. I'll get eight. Uh, okay. Curtis, hope, okay. That prediction. Okay. Eight. You think? I, I, say, I, say, I, say, I think that, man, they can go, you got to go 500. <laughs> you got to go at least 500. <laughs> okay. Double the win total. May, and Mayo, no. Uh, Mayo, no. If he don't, we clowning. Yeah. We own his ass, too. And, and Greg, I, I know we're up against it, but we uh, we got to get ready to go. But I have to say this. Wednesday night was spectacular. Tom Brady, unbelievable, the greatest quarterback to ever play the game. But I have to say this, that Ty Law is one of the best cornerbacks that I've ever seen in the National Football League and play with so it's like we give brady his flowers rightfully so but and and i would and i like the thing that i was so spectacular that that i really had so much pride in is to say that i got to play with brady guys like ty law you know guys like willie mcginnis some of the guys that you look at and you go they are just like generational players when you think of we all talk about dion we know dion's great but listen, this man right here, he ain't too far behind that guy. And let's be honest. Let's Love be it. honest. Love it. Brother. Thank you. Let's be honest. And that and that's just me giving him his flowers because he's my brother. I love him. He's my former teammate. And you know, I, that's you, the bro. respect that I have to do. Are you hanging are you hanging around? Yeah, I'm gonna hang around a little bit. Okay. Hey, I don't know if anybody live in Rhode Island, but we got a bottle signing at Haxons today. It, oh, 
Uh, for all the listeners, too, Hacks is 3 to 5 and Hacks is a Tobin. Warwick Rhode Island. We're going to okay. sign some And he's yeah. cool as <laughs> I did, I'm going to put it in the square, y'all. He is as real and the coolest shit from day one. All right. Hey, day one, welcome. dude. Wiggy, when he you. has not changed. It, it, the UV is going to be high today. Would you put sunblock, <laughs> sunblock on Ty Law's back? Uh, oh, I don't know. Do about that. Right. <laughs> he ain't changed from day one from the day I met this, no this dude. He's still the same guy. If he needed it. I, think I don't know do about it. that one, Courtney. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's hear it for Tyler. Awesome. Um, we're going to get to our hey, – Hey, what hey, what bar are we getting behind? What bar am I getting behind? Oh, I'm uh, going to have a drink with everybody before I go. Outside, what bar? You probably want the outside bar. Outside bar? Yeah. Outside bar. Well, no, then everybody will leave us and go to you. Huh? Right? Oh. No, no, okay. I'm just saying. We'll, we'll, we'll put what, you at the bar, back bar over here. Okay, right, right there. Ty's going to the back Let's bar go. over there.